Well, hello and welcome. My name is Mark Eppner. I'm a Chicago-based pilot with over half of my 2,000 plus hours in a Cirrus SR22. Currently, I fly this 2011 normally aspirated G3, but also fly other aircraft when the opportunity presents itself. I love flying every bit as much as you do and look for ways to share that common bond through multiple paths, including this channel, as well as Simple Flight Radio, which you can find at simpleflight.net. My goal for the channel is to share my passion for aviation with others that share that same sentiment and do so with an eye towards proficiency, safety, and fun. Well, hello and welcome. With the thermometer showing its normal end of year drop, especially in places like the Midwest or more specifically, in my case, Chicago, we start to think about the changes and implications associated with cold weather flying. Now, it's common for non-pilots to ask me, are you even allowed to fly in the winter? Most are surprised to hear how great winter flying is due to our increased performance, the perfect visibility, and the smooth skies we often see with the colder, denser air but invariably they get around to asking about the danger of icing. Somehow it seems to be common knowledge to think ice will form on the aircraft when freezing temperatures happen, whether or not there's visible moisture. Once I tell them that without the visible moisture, we won't get icing, they feel better. Of course, as pilots, we know the potential dangers of flying in icing conditions without a plan to get us to safer skies if needed. Now, when I joined with my flying partner to buy our SR-22 back in 2016, one of the top couple items on our must-have list was to ensure the plane was certified for flight into known icing conditions, or as we know, it's called FIKI, F-I-K-I. As most of you know, a FIKI airplane does not, and let me emphasize not, it does not give you permission to hang around in icing conditions, but rather more or less buys you time. It's a system that enables you to exit those conditions in the appropriate fashion. So today, because of all the questions I get, my goal is to share with you at a high level, how does the system work and how do pilots activate it? And specifically, I'm going to address it in the SR-22. The SR-22's FIKI system is made up of a couple components, starting with the anti-icing fluid, which we call TKS. But the TKS fluid essentially helps prevent ice from forming on the critical surfaces of the airplane. Now, associated with this fluid is a mechanical component, which consists of three metering pumps, which distributes the TKS to the leading edges of the wings, the horizontal and vertical stabilizer, the horns of the elevator, the windshield, and the propeller. In addition, there's a heat element, which provides heat to the pitot tube and the stall warning system, which is, to many of us, the stall tab, or the vane, if you will, which heats that to prevent ice from forming there as well. And lastly, the visual aids. First, we start off with a pair of ice lights, which are lights just forward of the cabin doors, that through a diffuser light up the leading edge of the wing on both sides of the airplane so you can see in low light or even at night conditions. The last piece of the visual identifier is this thin metal tab on both wings which is engineered to indicate icing prior to other surfaces getting that ice. Now the pilot controls the entire process from the switch panel. As you can see here moving from left to right it starts with the ice lights Moving to the next switch is the pitot heat switch, which in addition to the pitot uh, tube, it also heats that angle of attack and stall vane, which keeps ice off of that critical safety, safety item. And by the way, a side note, you're not supposed to use that heating system on the ground for more than 45 seconds. I think in later models of the SR-22, it actually reduces the amount of heat when you're on the ground but I've always been taught and my POH says 45 seconds, the most you can use it. Now moving to the right still again, we move into the TKS controls. The first switch is the on and off switch. When we switch it on, the TKS flows to all those surfaces for 30 seconds, then it shuts off for 90 seconds and then repeats again, 30 on, 90 off, 30 on, 90 off, and so on. Now the switch to the right of that is the normal versus high speed. So 
when we go from normal to high, that 3090 starts to run continuously. And the net effect is you put it, your, your TKS flow up from 100% to 200%. So at 100%, it runs about a two and a half hours. But now when you add the continuous running of going from normal to high, it only runs for about an hour 15. Now, to the right, you have a push button switch or a momentary, momentary button which says max. And when you push that, it brings in both pumps on the front edge operating, which takes you from 200 to 400 percent of flow. So now your, your time is approximately 30 to 40 minutes. Once you start with the full eight gallons, I might add, if you start lower, obviously it's going to run less. The switch next to the momentary button, which is the pump backup, that also provides 400%. The difference between the button will give you two months of, two, <laughs> two months, don't we wish, gives you two minutes of operation while the pump backup runs continuously. So you got to be careful with that because it will go through it a lot faster, maybe down to a half an hour left. But you use as much as you need to stay ahead of the icing accumulation. And again, to get out of that, that system and that icing area, which may only require a, a climb of a few hundred feet or a descent of a few hundred feet where you find the less icing, hopefully to get totally out of the clouds and that visible moisture so icing doesn't accumulate anymore from there. And finally, on the far right is the windshield momentary switch. When you press that, it actually serves two purposes. One, to prime the metering pump, so it's a great way to start the system up. But it also just sprays your windshield, which at first will actually make it harder to see through it. But in terms of taking ice off or preventing ice from forming on your windscreen, it's the perfect way to take it immediately off, prime your pumps, and get your system working. Now to monitor the operation, you select the engine page on the MFD and you can see in the lower left, it tells you how many gallons and how much time remains in the two tanks. Notice it says it's on normal mode here and it shows it's drawing from the left tank because of the block around the box around the L. And I can choose when I push the anti-ice to auto where it does either both or left or right or I can select up to right. Now to be Flight into known icing certified, I need to be able to, or excuse me, out of my eight gallon capacity, I need a minimum of five gallons. By the way, as separate aside, as the pilot in command, I have to take training every 24 months, which I did in the last few weeks. It's a great course by Cirrus, and I recommend it. So we have two hours and 25 minutes if we run this continuously. Once I go to from norm to high, now, it goes to high and I cut my duration of be having the TKS available because now it's going to run continuously and that'll give us 200% of our other coverage. And either by doing the pump backup or the max button down here, I can get 400%, which is 36 minutes. The difference between just using the max button that only lasts for two minutes. And if I put the pump back up and on, then it's continuous, learning at the 400%. So I'm really interested to hear how you fly in icing conditions, and if you have a different anti-ice system, whether it's TKS or boots, put in the comments how you use your system and how it's helped or maybe not helped your winter flying. And if you have any questions, certainly leave those in the comments section below as well. So with that, we'll call it a wrap. I wish all of you a very healthy and happy New Year and a holiday season filled with family and peace and, of course, blue skies and tailwinds.